Hi everyone, Effie here, the Greek goddess of great reading. Today I'll be reviewing Air to the Sky by Amanda Sen. As heir to a kingdom of floating continents, Callie has spent her life bound by limits, by her duties as a member of the royal family, by a forced betrothal to the son of a nobleman, and by the edge of the only world she's ever known, a small island hovering above a monster-ridden earth, long since uninhabited by humans. She is the eternal flame of hope for what's left of mankind, the wick and the wax burning in service for her people and for the revered phoenix whose magic keeps them aloft. When Kali falls off the edge of her kingdom and miraculously survives, she's shocked to discover there are still humans on the earth. Determined to get home, Kali entrusts a rugged monster hunter named Griffin to guide her across a world overrun by Chimera, storm dragons, basilisks, and other terrifying creatures. But the more time she spends on Earth, the more dark truths she begins to uncover about her home in the sky, and the more resolute she is to start burning for herself. Amanda Sun is one of my favorite authors. I really enjoyed her ink series, and I still need to read and review the last book, Storm, which will probably be the next book I review. But I knew it's an Amanda Sun book, and it reminded me a lot of the movie Castle in the Sky by Hayao Miyazaki. So I picked it up as soon as I saw it out, and it was a great book. I like that it's a standalone and not the continuation of a series so, or like the first book in a series because sometimes I find I get overwhelmed with a lot of books that are first books in a series and then to find out the rest of the story if you do like it you have to buy all the other books. So I like that she kind of managed to compact all the story into the one novel and I didn't find that it was rushed and things were developing too quickly because she was very good at utilizing time in the novel in that when she was on earth with Griffin and of course a relationship bloomed between those two, but it wasn't so fast that it bloomed. She used time to span the weeks and span the months, perhaps, that she was on Earth with Griffin in order to have those feelings develop a little more naturally than they would if she was just on Earth for maybe a week or two. I really liked the mythology of how the floating continents came into the sky. I like how the people of Ashra, which is the main floating continent where the royalty Kali and her father live. I like how they use the phoenix as the monster who took pity on all the humans and raised them up out of the ashes of the earth to protect them and save them from the monsters. But I also like the mythology that is told from Griffin's point of view and those of the people on earth. And I'm not going to tell you what that mythology is, but it's part of the reason why Callie starts questioning everything that she's been taught her whole life and really spurs her on to get home. The floating continent I just pictured in my head, it was so beautiful and so magical and because there's not that much magic in this book except for the fact of the floating continents and all the monsters around them. That's the most supernatural parts of the book and it's just nice that the humans are still human and monsters are monsters. There's a sort of middle ground that happens in the book of is a monster really a monster? Can a human be a monster as well? And Callie kind of comes across some of those questions throughout her journey. So Griffin was cute. I read a lot of reviews about Air to the Sky and they kept depicting Griffin as more of a kind of tough love type of guy, like he would insult you and kind of banter like that, and I thought him and Callie would maybe banter and that's how she started to like him, but he was just a really nice guy. He was really strong and brave because he fights all these monsters all the time, so there was that sort of badass part of him but his actual personality when he's talking to Callie because she's so new at this she thinks she's really that she must appear weak in his eyes but he's really supportive of her trying to learn how to manage on this earth and how to fight the monsters and he's just a really nice guy and I really liked him for that and I'm glad he wasn't kind of one of those guys who 
insults girls to get them to like him because as much as sometimes that does work in real life and in fiction, I don't really like that personality too much. So guys, if you haven't picked up Air to the Sky by Amanda Sun, I highly recommend you do. It's a great standalone novel if you're looking for something like that and you just want to buy one book and get all you can fantasy, romance, adventure, action, and mythology. It's really cool and Amanda Sun does a great job of telling this story. My next review will be Soldier, the third book in the Talon Saga by Julie Kagawa and I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm about halfway in so look for that review coming soon. My Twitter, website, and Instagram are linked in the bio below. Hit subscribe if you guys like what you see and want to see more videos by me. I'm Evie, the Greek goddess of great reading, and until next time, guys, keep reading.